الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافضل الصلاة وتم تسليمي على سيدنا محمد خاتم الأنبياء وامام المرسلين ولا أله وصحبه وسلم سليم كثيرا نويت تعلم وتعليم وتأذكر وتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحفا على تمسك بكتاب الله وبسرة رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى وبعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As mentioned last week inshallah we will start a brief discourse on the Imam Al-Azam, Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimallahu Ta'ala So inshallah this week we will start the discussion with Imam Abu Hanifa Imam Al-Azam inshallah Ta'ala So first and foremost his name was Nu'man Ibn Thabit Ibn Zuta Ibn Mahan and he was known as the greatest Imam Imam Al-Azam He was born in Kufa in Iraq So your village is in Kufa in Iraq and you are called Imam Al-Azam کہ اکبر امام کوفہ یہ بلد جو تھا یہ مرکز تھا اسلام کا اس وقت کا so it was the center of learning at that time کوفہ it is the legacy of the companions of سیدنا عبداللہ ابن مسعود and سیدنا علی رضی اللہ عنہما it's mentioned that approximately 1000 صحابہ went and stayed there. 1,000 sahaba aapne waha ja ke ikhtiyar ki riyash ki. 1,000 chose to stay there and many of them were from the Badri'een as well who took part in Badr. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, the companion, he was sent there to teach the people by Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. تو آپ کو وہاں سیدنا عمر نے بیجا لوگوں کو سکانے کے لیے سیدنا عمر رضی اللہ عنہ when speaking about Kufa he said that it is کنز الایمان اس شہر کو کہا کہ یہ کنز الایمان ہے یعنی کہ ایمان کا خزانہ it is the treasure of faith and why is it important to mention this because this is the surroundings that امام ابو حنیفہ رحم اللہ تعالی This is where he was raised and he was born. He was born and there's a difference of opinion. Some say he was born in 77 after Hijri. Some say he was born in 80 after Hijri. He was the earliest of the four Imam. Chara imma imamo me se ye pehle the. By lineage he is Persian. Farsi. And his father, Rahimullah, Sayyidina Thabit himself, he was a Tabi'i. انہوں نے صحابہ سے ملاقات کی and he arrives in the court in the presence of Sayyidina Ali رضی اللہ عنہ and he asks him please make duas of goodness for myself تو انہوں نے Sayyidina Ali کی خدمت میں حاضر ہوئے اور ان کے حق میں دعائے خیر فرمائے and many say that Sayyidina Imam Al-Azam Imam Abu Hanifa رحم اللہ He is a result of that dua of goodness. So you, Sayyidina Imam Al-Azim, Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimullah Ta'ala, you are Sayyidina Ali ki fair dua ki fair so. In appearance, he is described by many of the people who describe him as being good looking in face and beard. Right? So he would take care in his appearance. He would wear nice clothes. He would wear good atar and he would look good all the time and once when he was asked why is this the case تو آپ نے فرمایا کہ اللہ تبارک و تعالی کی نعمتوں کو بلند کرو so if you have it it's not where you go and you flaunt it with arrogance and stuff but if you have it you know you wear a nice jubba you know amani jubba right amani boy yeah you you make sure your beard is nice you put oil on it you make yourself look presentable Why? Because this was, this was the method of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He always took care of his appearance. You know, when you look through the seerah and the shama'il of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what's described at time, what he is using is 
It's shampoo. And then he's creating like putting lotus leaves in there, a musk, etc. Mixing it all up. He's creating a type of soap, a quote unquote, a shower gel for himself, a shampoo for himself. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is applying oil to his hair. Because now he has to go and give that what to people, so he has to look presentable. It's, it's a misconception now that people think that when you come towards the deen, this is what's the point coming to the religion if these people are looking so you know unkept? So it's very important that when you are in the field of da'wah, and this doesn't mean that you're preaching on the members of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you are out and about and you're giving da'wah to people, you need to be looking presentable. He was medium in stature and he was eloquent in speech. He did not speak except to answer questions. If there was something being spoken about which did not concern him, he remained quiet. Again, from the characteristics of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In his early life, he was a silk merchant. So he would sell silk garments. That was his profession. So you Reshmi to sell the Reshmi garments. This is Rishmi, right? Yeah. So he used to eat only from what he earned. He didn't look to his students. He didn't look to his quote unquote marids to say, come and give me money. He never did this. He was the one who would look after his students. No, don't get ideas. <laughs> He was once walking and Imam Shu'bi saw him and asked him which scholars gatherings he would sit with. Imam Shu'bi that you seem very intelligent to me you should go and sit in the gatherings of the righteous scholars. This sparks a fire within the heart of Sayyidina Imam Al-Azam, Abu Hanifa rahimullahu ta'ala, and now he starts to pursue the sacred knowledge. The first science which was of interest to him and which he mastered was Ilmul Kalam, speculative theology. So you Ilmul Kalam ke mahir ho he would debate and refute the deviants. Munazara karte. Ononga rugby karte. And because of this, he would travel to Basra more than 20 times and stay there for months on ends, just defeating the deviants. And because of this, he became famous. People began to recognize him to the point he says that Imam Abu Hanifa, that when I used to walk to, through the streets, Right? He took from his main teacher, who was Hamad ibn Abi Sulaiman, who passes away in 120 after Hijri. This was his main teacher. However, a woman once approached Imam Abu Hanifa rahimallah, and she says, Tell me the Sunnah way how a divorce is given. He says, go to Hamad. Hamad ibn Suleiman, go to him. And when you find out, come back and tell me as well. She goes to him, Hamad ibn Suleiman, he, she, he gives her the procedure. He says, you know, the man gives the woman the divorce once. When she is not menstruating. She then, after three months, when the third month is completed, she completes a ghusl and after this she is free to marry elsewhere and she is out of the akad, out of the nikah of the first husband. When she came back and told Imam Abu Hanifa this procedure, he said, I have no need for theology. He then began to sit in the gatherings of Humayr, Hamad, his teacher. 
This is when it, this teaching, uh, the learning begins of Imam Abu Hanifa in fiqh. He would sit there, aap baithte, aur jo bhi aapke ustad Hamad sahab kehte, aap uska hifz karte. In the night time, he would go and memorize it. In the morning, he would repeat exactly what the teacher had said. Whereas the other students, they would make mistakes. Wo galtiya karte. Ye dekar Hamad ne, Sheikh Hamad ne farmaya, ke agli saf pe kisi ko nahi baithna chahiye, sivai Imam Abu Hanifa ke. Only Abu Hanifa should sit in the front row directly in front of me. Nobody else should. It's mentioned Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah. Now pay attention to this. He took, he took, aapne istafada kiya, 4,000 ulama se. From 4,000 ulama, he took knowledge from. But his main teacher was uh, Imam Hamad. He saw the companions. So he himself is a tabi'i. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah wa tabi'in. Remember what, what is a tabi'i? The Sahaba are those who saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the tabi'in are who? The ones who saw the Sahaba. So Sayyidina Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah is from the tabi'i. He saw Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an multiple times, not just once. In Fawaid al-Fawaid al bahiya Imam Abdul Qadir al-Misri. Now, I'm going to deliberately mention mostly, or the most part, non-Hanafi ulama, just in case anyone says there's a bit of bias. Imam Abdul Qadir al-Misri, he states, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimullah, he related hadith from seven sahaba. Saad sahaba se aapne hadith ki rivayat li. From them, wa Anas ibn Malik, who is, was the Khadim of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jabir ibn Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Unais. They vote from amongst them. In Al-Jawahir, Al-Mudi'ah, Abu Umar ibn Abdul Bar al-Maliki, he relates the incident. And this is from Abu Yusuf, the student, Qadi Abu Yusuf, um, who relates from Imam Abu Hanifa. That Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimullah, he said, in 93 after Hijri, 93 after Hijri. So according to this narration, we're working on that he was born in 77 after Hijri. Sayyidina Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah ne farmaya jab me sola saal ka tha, when I was 16 years old. I went to do Hajj with my father. Me Hajj karne ke liye nikla. Or wahaan me jab pouncha, to me ne dekha bhoot hi beer hai. Or loog gathe huye hain ek shaks ke ird ge. So they're surrounding a certain individual. So I asked my father, who is this individual? And my father said, this is the companion Anas ibn Malik. This is Anas ibn Malik. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke sahabi. Afwan, afwan, no. Abdullah ibn Harith ibn Jaz'a. This is Abdullah ibn Harith ibn Jaz'a. They said, he questioned, why are people gathering around him? Is sahaba ki sahabi ke ird gird kyu gathe hui hai? He, his father says, because he has narrations of hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inke paas hadith hai. To Imam Abu Hanifa, 16 years old, he says, mujhe aage leke ja, mujhe bhi sunna hai. Take me forward, I want to listen as well. He goes forward and he hears the hadith. Whoever acquires understanding of the religion, Allah suffices him in his matters of concern and provides him with sustenance from sources which he could not expect. Or usko rizq ata farmayega un asbabo se jin ko jis se unne bhi socha bhi nahi. From those avenues which he hasn't even thought about. So everyone runs after the, the, the dunya. Everyone loves the dunya. We have to learn. We have to do uh, learning in universities. We have to do postgrad. We have to be masters. We have to do this business, that business. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you here. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling you here. If you go towards the religion, I will give you the sustenance what you require. 
those needs which you have, I will fulfill them for you. So the debate is not if he, radiallahu an, related from the companions or if he met them, but the debate is how many did Imam Abu Hanifa relate from? Imam Abu Hanifa ne sahaba ko mila ya nahi? Sawal ye hai ke kitno ko mila? How many did he meet? Kitno ki saad mulakat hui? This is the debate. His gatherings, us wat ke jaleel o qadr o fokaha, unke majalis mein hadir hote. They would go and sit in his gatherings. The likes of Abu Yusuf, the likes of Zafar. Zafar. One ruling that they had to deal with could take up to one month to conclude. Ek masle pe ek mahina laga dete. Aaj kya hota hai? Bhai, chodo, main internet pe jata hoon, main waha dekhta hoon. I'll go and check on the internet. Bam. Look, there's this hadith there. This is what you need to do. These are the elite these are people who the Prophet Wasallam said the best of generations is my generation and then the generation after that and then the generation after that. He is from that second generation. He is spending one month at a time sometimes to come to a conclusion on a masala and you want to go to share Google and say there's a hadith or a verse there. Don't. You must stay in your lane. Grow up. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimullah he resolved 80,000 Masail. Asi Hazar, 80,000 Masail, Apne Unka Halkia. And from there, 33,000 of these were for Ibadat and the rest were on transactions. In terms of his worship, Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimullah, Charlie Sal Kiliye. Apne Fajr ki namaz Isha ke wudu ke saath ada ki. For 40 years he performed Fajr with the wudu of Isha. What do we mean by that? Meaning for 40 years every single night he performed Qiyamul Layl. He did not sleep. Why? Because when you sleep it breaks your wudu. He would complete 61 Quran khatams in Ramadan. 61 Quran khatams in Ramadan. He would complete one Quran khatam at night time. A Quran ka khatam ab raat ko karte, dusra Quran khatam ab din ko karte. Or a Quran khatam ab taravi ke doran karte. And one, one was during the taravi. How many do we complete? And this wasn't just in Ramadan. It's mentioned in one narration that Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah ta'ala he would often complete the entire Quran in every rakat of his night prayer. Har ek rakat mein ab akthar Quran khatam karte. In the place that he passed away, in the place that he passed away, he had already completed 7,000 Quran khatams. Now, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah ta'ala, he's constantly attacked with regards to hadith because the hadith that the Hanafis use they don't usually correspond with Bukhari and Muslim right now with Bukhari and Muslim what you need to first and foremost understand is they came after Imam Abu Hanifa they came later on and they were already Shafi'i right so what they are trying to mostly prove and what they are recording is according to the Shafi'i school so if you go and look at the Hanbali school as well a lot of the references that we get from Sheikh is from the Musnad Abu Ya'la, Musnad Imam Ahmed, right? The Jamia Sahih of Imam Siyuti, correct? Right? So what are we going to say now about the Hanbalis now? Are you going to say the same thing about them? Khair. The point of that is, there are many collections of Hadith, many collections, not just Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. For those people who restrict themselves to Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari is because they have no understanding of Hadith. They have no understanding of transmission of the religion. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimullah, he was strict in Hadith. And he only accepted Hadith from trustworthy narrators. If you are then you take Hadith. If you are not Hadith, then you take Hadith. 
If a hadith contradicted the consensus on a fiqh matter, he would not accept it. If this hadith is a khilaf, then you will not accept it. You will not accept it. The Baz Jahil says that Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimullah is 15 or 11. Hadith aapko pata thi. This is what they say that you only knew three or eleven hadith. And they say, if we be generous, then you knew sixty hadith at the ma maximum. This is what the Jahid say. Now let's see what the Muhaddithin say. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he says, from the renowned Muhaddithin, he was from the renowned Muhaddithin, he says. That if you want to learn hadith, agar aapko hadith ki taaleem seekhni hai, to aap pe lazim hai, aap ja ke Imam Abu Hanifa se seekhe. That if you want to learn hadith, it is mandatory to go and sit in the gatherings of Imam Abu Hanifa because the meanings and the interpretations of hadith can only be attained from him. Mullah Ali Al-Qari rahimallahu ta'ala he notes Imam Abu Hanifa in his Tasanif, in his writings, he has noted 70,000 plus, 70,000 plus ahadith. In his Athar, he has selected 40,000 ahadith in there. Jalis has that. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, radiallahu an, he said, and this is in Al Jawahir Al Mudia, he says, the first person to make me a hadith scholar was Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. These are muhaddithin talking now. How are you going to come now 200 years ago and try and attack Imam Abu Hanifa? And all you have to do is go on social media now and you will see this. Like little boys or maybe 13, 14 years old, 16 years old on the keyboards attacking Imam Abu Hanifa. Are we going to take your words for it? Or are we going to take the words of the elite scholars, the elite muhaddithin at that time? Ibn Hajar al haytami in his Khayratul Hisan, he mentioned, Imam Abu Hanifa has related hadith from 4,000 elite scholars. These were from the elite tabi'in. Imam Zahabi, he recorded Imam Abu Hanifa under those individuals who are ranked as the Hufaz of Hadith. And he further adds, he says, anyone who attacks Imam Abu Hanifa is only doing so out of Hasad, out of envy, out of envy. This is why they're doing it. Yusuf Hasad ki torpe Imam Abu Hanifa ke khilaf paate karte hain. Now, there is a claim from Imam Bukhari, which is attributed to Imam Bukhari in his Kitab al dufa that he mentions that Imam Abu Hanifa along the lines of that he is uh, seen by the people as from um, from the people of the Murja'a. Murja ah. So he says, we remain silent upon this. this. These attacks which are being made upon Imam Abu Hanifa make no sense because in his al fiqh al-Akbar himself, Imam Abu Hanifa mentions, and we went through this, right? He said, the Murji'as were many in Kufa and they were against the truth. They were not upon the truth. And he said, I would defeat them in debates. Maki ibn Ibrahim, who was the teacher of Imam Bukhari and Imam Bukhari related many of the, his hadith from Maki ibn Ibrahim. Maki ibn Ibrahim, he says, Imam Abu Hanifa was the greatest scholar of his time. Then he is accused, Imam Abu Hanifa, of not following hadith. In Al-Mizan, Imam Jafir al-Sadiq, Muqatil bin Hayyan and Hamad, they all come to Imam Abu Hanifa and they said, you do much qiyas. And for those of you who know the Hanifi school, Imam, the school of Imam Abu Hanifa is not qiyas. It's istihsan. You know, Imam Shafi'i does more qiyas than Imam Abu Hanifa. Qiyas uh, is analytical reasoning. And qiyas is using, um, istihsan is um, leaving qiyas for using a lesser proof for the benefit of the people. 
He spoke with them in depth for many, many hours till Zawal. And he proved that his school was a true reflection of the Quran and Sunnah. They said, we accused you without knowledge. They kissed his head and they said, forgive us. And they asked him to pray for their forgiveness. Imam Bakir, who is from the grandsons of Sayyidina Rasulullah on the second visit of Imam Abu Hanifa to Medina. So he says to Imam Abu Hanifa, oh, so it is you who goes against the Sunnah of my grandfather. Imam Abu Hanifa says, A'udhu Billah. Who would dare contradict that hadith of the Messenger of Allah So then he speaks and he says, who is weaker, the man or the woman? Imam Bakir says, the woman. So he says, if that is the case, then the woman should get a greater inheritance share. But I didn't say that. I stuck to the ruling that the greater share is given to the man. Then he says, which is a higher duty? Salah or fasting? Imam Bakir says, Salah. So he says, if that is the case, I would have said for a menstruating woman to do qada of a salah and not the qada of a fasting. But I said that she does qada of her fast and not her salah. Thereupon proving that he was not using qiyas. He was not leaving the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Imam Bakir was very pleased with this. And he understood that these were mere rumors. He did not teach whilst his teacher Hamad bin Suleiman was alive. Then when he passes away, he takes the seat of his teacher and he begins teaching. When he begins teaching, he has a dream of him digging the grave of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he sees this dream, he gets very scared. He becomes frightened. So he leaves his teaching. Upon this, Ibn Sirin, the great interpreter of dreams, he comes and he interprets the dream for him and he says, no, the meaning of this dream is that you are going to revive the dead branches of the religion of the Rasul Sallallahu He was offered the position of Qadi for the Caliph Mansur. And this was a sham because in reality it was because he was speaking against him. Because the ulama don't stay quiet in the face of falsehood. They speak up against it. But he refused. And because of this, he was imprisoned. He was imprisoned and he was beaten and he was starved. And eventually, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimullah, he was poisoned by the prison guards. So he dies a martyr. Today is the 9th, 8th, 8th of Rajab. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimullah, he passes away, he is martyred on 2nd Rajab, 150 after Hijri, at the age of 70 years old. His janaza prayer, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimullah's janaza prayer, was performed six times. And in all of these six times, 50,000 people attended to pray his janaza. For 20 days after his burial, people would attend his grave and they would perform Salatul Janata Ghaib over him. 40 of his students, they recorded and compiled his works, the likes of Abu Yusuf, Zafar, Dawood at tai Asad ibn Amr, and you have Imam Hassan al-Shaybani. Some of the scholars, what did they say about Imam Abu Hanifa? Imam Shafi'i said, people are dependent on Imam Abu Hanifa in the field of jurisprudence. In fiqh, they rely upon Imam Abu Hanifa. Imam Malik was asked, did you ever meet Imam Abu Hanifa? He said, yes, I have met him. He is such a man that if he says he could turn and he was touching a pillar and he said if, that he could turn this pillar into gold, he would be able to provide evidence to prove that he could turn it into gold. <laughs> Muhammad ibn al-Bishr, he mentions, and we'll close on this, because there's so much to say. This is just a drop in the ocean of what could be said about Imam Abu Hanifa. I have volumes on his life at home. This is just a 20, 30 minute lecture. Muhammad ibn al-Bishr, he says that he would go to visit Imam Abu Hanifa and he would go to visit Sufyan al-Fawri. 
He says that when I would go to visit Sayyidina Sufyan al-Thawri, upon that I would tell him that I have just visited Imam Abu Hanifa and Sufyan al-Thawri, he would say, you have just come from the greatest jurist, the greatest faqih in the world. This is the rank of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. This is his abilities. This is his rank in fiqh, in kalam, in theology, in hadith. If you want to learn about Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, if you want to learn about Malik, Shafi'i, Ahmad, go to the original sources. Go to what the ulama of their time said. Don't go to people who have only a history to back to 200 years. That's like going to Chelsea now and saying, what history do you have? They have no history because it started with Abramovich and it ended with him. With these people, it started with M-I-A-W and it's going to end with him as well. Right? So be careful who you take your religion from. Your internet, Google is not a source of sacred knowledge. This is only a source of misguidance. So please be careful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the ranks of the great Imam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to honor him and ensure that we are of those people who follow the school according to it. Uh, Please pray.